Morning, YouTubers. <laughs> On today's episode, we are going to be talking about tungsten angle. How much of a push angle do you want? Do you want to go straight in? Do you want to do a drag angle? A gentleman had some questions. I have some answers. So let's get into it. So here's the setup we got. Got a piece of 3 16 thick 304 stainless steel. I'm going to be welding it with 045 filler, 308 filler. Got the TIG torch with a number 12 cup, about 25 cubic feet an hour. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna weld one pass with a push angle, one pass with a straight in angle, and then one pass with a drag angle. These up here I did for test just to get dialed in. The machine's fixed at 100 amps, so I'm gonna be going full pedal for each weld. There won't be any adjusting of the amperage other than the initial uh, run-in. So I have our three test welds here. The first weld was done with a push angle, the second weld was done with a straight in angle, and then the third weld was welded with a drag angle. All three of them were welded at the same 100 amps. The first weld is a little bit uh, colder, it's a little bit thinner. Reason being is my travel speed was higher. So when I push, it's very comfortable, and my travel speed was a little bit higher than the other two because all three of these are fixed at 100 amps. With the straight in angle, it took me a little bit more time to go end to end, therefore it gave it time to wet out and widen out. And then the last one, which was the drag angle, took me the longest, um, mainly because it was difficult seeing what was going on. Overall, all three welds are pretty acceptable. One thing worth noting is as I was welding these, I noticed it oxiding as I was welding it, which it shouldn't have been doing with as big of a cup as I had. Well, after some checking of the parts in it, I realized I had an eighth inch collet in it instead of a 332. So argon gas was escaping through the collet body into the back cap and the O-ring on the back cap was bad. So it was leaking out the back of the torch. Now that I have a new O-ring on and a proper collet, um, it welds pure silver like you can see in these spot welds. So we're a lot better. Always pay attention to that. So anyways, is there ever a reason that you don't want to back drag with TIG? And the answer is yes. So when you look at these spots here, these dictate what you're actually seeing with the weld pool. So when you have a push angle, this is kind of what your molten pool will look like. I mean, the more extreme it is, the more pointed it will be, but this is a pretty accurate representation. TIG tungsten's right there, pool's here. As I dab it here, you can see that filler's quite a long ways away from the tip of that tungsten. When you go straight in, you're very close to that tungsten tip to where a little bit of a whoops and you just contaminated your tungsten with the filler rod. Now when you back drag, which is a little bit difficult to do here, you're literally trying to push this tungsten, or excuse me, the filler in and not hit the tungsten and you have such a small area that it's almost guaranteed you're gonna dip the tungsten in the pool or the rod into the tungsten. So back dragging it is just far more difficult to hit the puddle. Arguably, it may create a colder weld simply because where you're adding it to the puddle is the colder side. This is the hotter section right here. So you're, you're not adding a filler to the, the hottest part of it. So it's hard to say, but there probably will be slight differences in penetration. The other huge issue and I'll bring a TIG torch over here, is visibility. Now, when this thing's rocked all the way back and you're trying to dab under this cup, you can't see almost anything. So a drag angle like that just simply isn't going to work very well. The other option you have in back drag like this, that would solve your visibility problem, and it would also solve your issue of 
uh, your tungsten being too close to the filler. However, in a tight spot, I don't know how that would really help you that much. I mean, maybe it will. And if so, that's all right. I mean, a little bit of it isn't going to hurt you. But what you have to remember is as you rock this torch way back, if your filler comes in close to flat on a plate, it's going to end up melting all the way back over here where the heat is. So you're going to almost have to dab this filler in straight up if you try and weld like this. Again, not very practical. But on an inside corner joint on something, if this is the only way you can start in a corner and then weld out and get a proper weld because it's inaccessible otherwise, you got to do what you got to do. So I'm not knocking that. It's just your visibility and your risk of contaminating the tungsten with a back drag angle is why you probably shouldn't do it. So with the knowledge on tungsten angles, I took the cup off of this torch this is an inside corner angle. Say I had to weld something like this where I had to weld all the way over to there and then here. How I would weld this, I would start over here, go with a push angle, weld all the way down to the corner. Then I would change the filler, come over here, and from the corner, I would weld all the way down here all with either a straight in or slight push angle. Technically, you could come in here in a corner and back drag and add it, but you're gonna find that you're just gonna melt off the filler and it's gonna be very difficult to control it. So I wouldn't recommend that, but if you had to do it for like half an inch or a quarter inch just to get outside of the corner and then switch hands, so be it. It's not the end of the world. For the vertical up, I would just come in here, start at the bottom, get it nice and hot in a corner, and just bring the tungsten right up, up to the upper corner. You know, again, you want to do as much as you can as far as using a pusher straight in, just because of A, for visibility, and B, because you're less likely to dab the tungsten. Two other things I want to quickly go over here that I think would help you guys. One is, this is not a fixed head TIG torch. I can actually bend it. This comes in handy for doing inside corner joints and just getting better positions, because if you look here, this moves my hand completely out of this area here. When you run a standard non-flex head torch and you're welding like this at an angle, your whole hand can obscure what you're looking at. Like if you look at that versus this. See how open that is and now I can see what I'm doing? Having a flex head or a rotary flex where it has a nut and a knob on it that spins on the shaft, either this or the rotary flex are the way to go for better welds inside corners and hard to reach points. It's also worth mentioning that you can change the back cap out on this TIG torch to shorten the overall length of it which can help you get into places. The last thing I'm going to mention, and I sort of touched on it earlier, when you run straight in, you can run your filler almost completely flat to the plate and it will be fine. If you run a push angle and you run your filler like this, what's going to happen is you're going to melt off the end of the filler. Well, I think I covered everything pretty well. Hopefully it answers the gentleman's question regarding TIG torch angle and whatnot. So anyways, if you have any comments, questions, you know where to leave them. Thanks.